Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds and today we're going to be installing some branch circuits in the Lego barn. Now today what we're going to be doing is just putting up a few outlets. Uh, I do have power to my main panel now and I will make a video on that and discuss some of that in more depth later. Uh, but right now what I want to discuss, <laughs> I already do have power to that main panel. Um, the main thing I want to discuss though right now is branch circuits and how many outlets you have to have and so on and so forth when putting in branch circuits into your garage. Now, two things to keep in mind. Uh, this is going to be a workshop. So what I'm using is, as you can see here, it's yellow. And this is 12-2 Romex. I'm trying to get a better, there we go. You can see that it says Romex. This is 12-2. And the reason they call it 12-2 is because you have two conductors. They consider your neutral a conductor, and they consider your power line a conductor. And then your third wire is a bare ground, as you can see there. So that's what we're going to be using for our branch circuits today. Now, the reason I am starting with talking about the wire uh, is because I want to talk about wiring, sizing, and such. Uh, and the reason I'm going to point that out is with 12-2, you can do a 20-amp branch circuit. Beings that this is my workshop, uh, this is a pole barn, I wanted to go ahead and have all my circuits on a 20 amp branch circuit. So I am using the 12-2, which is required by code. You do not have to use 12-2. Uh, it is more expensive. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to say for a 250 foot roll here where I live, which is in Michigan, uh, it's around $50, $55 for a 250 foot roll of 12-2 and I want to say it's about $35 for a uh, 50 foot roll of 14-2. 14-2 is what you would use for uh, making a branch circuit for 15 amps. And just real quickly I was going to show you on the lighting panel that all my breakers are 20 amps uh, which again is why I'm going with the 12-2. But again like I said back to the main point of this is, uh, is installing branch circuits. If you want to do uh, 15 amp circuits feel free to do 15 amp circuits the biggest thing to remember is if you're going to do a 15 amp circuits you got to have a 15 amp breaker which I just showed you over there minor 20 and then you would use 14 uh, to wire and then the other thing you have to keep in mind is the outlets themselves if you're going to do 20 amp branch circuits you got to have outlets that have a 20 amp designation and I just want to show on an outlet, if I can get it to focus fairly decently anyway, at least I think that's focusing, uh, you'll even see that right there in that corner, it'll say 20 amps and 125 volts. But another giveaway for that 20 amp outlet is you'll have that little piece sticking off the side there like that for your uh, ground, or I'm sorry, your neutral. Uh, if this was a 15 amp, it would just have the two straight blades. It would not have the little cut piece in the side. But anyway, the other big thing you want to keep in mind uh, when you are installing outlets is anytime you're installing outlets, when you start locating them on your walls, I'm actually going to be locating mine. I think they're, uh, I'm doing it about eight feet apart. That's well within code. You don't have to put them that close. Uh, what code requires is with this being a door opening, starting from this stud here, and let me zoom back out a little bit. I guess I already was. <clears throat> starting with this stud here, this would be my door opening. You have to be six feet from the, the start of it, minimum, and then it's 12 feet between each outlet after that particular outlet. So anywhere that there is a beginning of a wall, the first outlet has to be six foot from that opening and then 12 foot in between. Now lastly, uh, again, this isn't a requirement. This is just me because I am making a workshop. I'm going to be putting in a bunch of different circuits all the way through here. So yes, it will require more wire. Uh, but what it is, is I wanna have at any point in the garage, the availability of power if absolutely needed. Because again, this is a workshop. So what I'm doing is these three walls here, or these three spots anyway here, is going to be a circuit. And then I'm going to do another 20 amp circuit here, and then another 20 amp circuit there, another 20 amp circuit there, another 20 amp circuit here, and then another 20 amp circuit for there, and then this outer wall here. Uh, that way, at any time, if I need more than 20 amps of power, I can readily grab another 20 amp circuit, 
from anywhere in the pole barn, workshop, whatever you want to call it, while I'm working, so I always have an abundance of power. Uh, is it overkill? Yes, it probably is. Uh, and again, you don't have to use 20 or 12-2 uh, wire. You could use 15-2 wire if you want to go 15 amp branch circuits, but being this is a workshop, I want 20 amps and I want readily power everywhere. Now, the minimum requirements for a garage, well, <laughs> at this point in time anyway, uh, the minimum requirements are one outlet and one switched overhead light. Uh, that code is changing for the 2019 update, though, and uh, I'm not really going to get too far into it because, like I said, that is a new code update, and it's only considered code once the jurisdiction, your local electrical jurisdiction, accepts that anyway. But uh, again, with what I'm doing here anyway, I'm way above that code anyway. But again, uh, this was just a quick discussion on how to do some branch circuits, some quick information about them as far as locating your outlets and things of that nature. Um, the other thing I do want to point out is when you are running your wire, now you're supposed to technically when you're doing a house, mind you this is a pole barn so it's a big difference. Uh, normally what you would do is in the center of the stud, you would drill a hole, run your wire through and then down to each box. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stapling it, the, the Romex, to this 2x4 that comes here, and then into my box. The thing that you want to keep in mind is for every box that you mount on a stud, when you're bringing that wire into your box, you have to be attached, uh, secured, at 6 inches from that point. And when I say you want to be attached, uh, what I use is these little staples here. Uh, it's basically a... U-shaped nail with a plastic uh, grommet on it, for if you will, uh, and that has to be six inches from the point of where you put the box at, with the attachment of the Romex. Uh, what I'll actually even do is I'm going to go ahead and run my outlets here real quick that I want to install, so that way I can start doing some more work on the side here on the pole barn, uh, and then I'll show you what exactly what I was talking about. Now, real quickly, I just went ahead and ran some of the Romex along and put the staples on, as you can see there. And what I want to show you is again, you want to be make sure you're stapled six inches from your box. Uh, something else I do want to remind you is typically if you're doing a house, you're going to have the holes drilled uh, on the center of these studs. So you wouldn't be doing the anchoring in between like I am. And something else just to point things out. Uh, and explain reasonings why the code requires certain things that they do. Uh, again, typically if this was your house, it would be framed with 2x4s and then they would want you to drill your holes in the center of the 2x4 when you're running your Romex through the 2x4s. The reasoning for that is so when they're putting up the drywall or they're putting up the sheathing on the exterior or anything like that, they want the wire in the center of the wall so it's very unlikely that a nail will puncture or poke into that wire and cause a problem. And because we're running it on the face of the purlin that's on the exterior of the pole barn, we already have that inch and a half of clearance. So that's why you can just run it on the front of your purlins like I did here, and then anchor it like so, without having to drill through your two by fours. Something else I want to point out, um, when you're getting your rough in inspections, they're gonna to wanna to see at least six inches of wire hanging out of each box. Uh, before you put your outlets on them. So when you're doing your rough in, you always want to have a little tail like that sticking out. And again, as you can see here, there's my six inch attachment. Um, but when you're putting your panel, your wires in your panel, what I always like to do, as you can see here, is wherever the wire is entering the panel, I like, like from this particular situation, it comes in from the bottom. So I make sure that the wire will actually extend all the way to the top. And the reason that I do that, <clears throat> why most people do it anyway, um, is because once that wire goes into your panel, you want it to be able to connect anywhere that it needs to go. Uh, so if this wire was going to be on the top breaker, you ran it to the top of the panel already, so you know you have enough wire that it will go there, it will go to your neutral bar, and it will also go to your ground bar. And that's the reasoning for that. Some people will even tell you to have enough cable to run it all the way to the top and back to the bottom again. But to me, I feel that's kind of overkill. Something else I do want to point out is when you are putting your outlets, as you can see here, my Romex does come down below the box. 
you can go below or above. Uh, your inspector typically won't care. Because this is a garage, all my outlets are 36 inches off the floor. So that's something else you gotta keep in mind. Uh, and then what I'll probably be doing is putting my light switches at 48. But uh, anyway, the reasoning that the wire is coming down or it goes up is again, they want that six inch attachment from the box. So you have to always go down or up. Typically I go down. And the reason that I do that is because uh, in some situations when I've had inspectors come and look at it, when you come and go up, and again, typically I'm going through the two by fours in the wall. Uh, the inspectors don't like to see that. And the reason is because once it's getting up so high on the wall, they look at that as a point where the typical homeowner might come out to a garage when it's unfinished and you can see the wire hanging in the wall and they might start using it as like a clothes hanger or a parts hanger or a tool hanger and they don't want anything hanging on those tools or on those those wires so generally i always run my wire down at a lower point because typically the inspectors like to see that and it's less likely that anybody's going to use it as something to hang anything from but i really don't have to worry about it here as this will be a finished building, I will be insulating it and I will be drywalling over it. So you'll never see them anyway, but it's just from habit and from dealing with inspectors in the past, that's why I do it this way. Anyway, I hope that answers any and all your questions for rough and plumbing and basic, or plumbing, <laughs> rough and electrical uh, and basic electrical as far as your branch circuits. Um, so as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down in the comment section below and I will be happy to get back with you as soon as I can on any of those responses. Um, and again, as always, thanks for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.